I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. Are people more inclined to listen today? It seems like an issue that's brought up more often over the last few years than it was maybe five, ten years ago. It seemed like science fiction. Maybe they will. So far they haven't. I think people don't, like the normally the way that regulations work it's very slow, it's very slow indeed. So usually there'll be something, some new technology, it will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking. Then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. If you look at, say, automotive regulations, how long did it take for seatbelts to be, to be implemented, to be required? You know, the auto industry fought seatbelts, I think, for more than a decade, successfully fought any regulations on seatbelts, even though the numbers were extremely obvious. If you had a seatbelt on, you would be far less likely to die or be seriously injured. It was unequivocal. And the industry fought this for years successfully. Eventually, after many, many people died, regulators insisted on teeth belts. Oof, this, is a, this time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. And you feel like this is decades away or years away from being too late? If you have this fatalistic attitude and you yeah. feel like it's going, we're in a almost like a doomsday countdown. It's not necessarily a doomsday countdown. It's it's a out of control countdown. Out of control. Yeah, people call it the singularity, and uh, that's that's probably a good way to think about it. It's, it's a singularity. It's hard to predict, like a black hole. What, what happens past the event horizon. Right. It's so different. once it's implemented, it's very different because it, it will once be able to... Once the out of the bottle, what's right. going to happen? And it will be able to improve itself. Pro yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous biological shitting, pissing thing trying to stop the gods. No, stop. We like we like living with a finite lifespan and, and watching, you know, Norman Rockwell paintings. It could be terrible and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Do you think that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now? Or do you think it will replace us? Well, that's the scenario. The, the, the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. Like For if, us. Yes. Like if you, if you can't beat it, join it. <laughs> that's. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so from a long term existential standpoint, that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. Because we have a bandwidth problem. You just can't communicate through your fingers, it's too slow.